Get ready to get uncorked. It's a new kind of show. Starring me, Cindy Ashton. With special guest, Jamie Don. Live from the streets of New York City. This is Cindy Uncorked. Guess what? We're back for episode two. And today we are going to be tackling sexuality in the workplace. Is it appropriate or is it not? And at the very end of the show, the listener question is around, well, you're talking, Cindy, about all the sexuality stuff. How the heck do you tap into your feminine power? I've got a super cool exercise for you. But first, as usual, we have the adventure of the week. So let's go to it and let's get uncorked. All right, part two is here. We've got Equa, we've got Shaw, and I hope you at home have been doing your hip rotations and opening yourself and feeling that strength. Today, I have a very important question. Tell me about the ch chikacha and how it relates to pre-marriage and relationship. Mm. Well, um, in a lot of coastal cultures, in, actually most of, mostly in Tanzania, they don't do it as much in Kenya. Um, before a couple gets married, the woman has a trainer called a somo, a teacher. Somo. Yeah. And the somo's job is at least for about a week prior to the wedding. I mean, so we've spent your youth sort of doing all these different dances and developing these muscles and all of this kind of thing. But you have a somo who's basically a Kama Sutra teacher. Um, who cool. comes in and teaches you specific, <laughs> not just sexual moves, mm. um, even though that's very important, but also to do with hygiene, to do with how you know a grown woman is supposed to behave in the world or what's expected of you and similarly a man is also taught similar things i find the couples who don't have a healthy sex life it often trickles into other i mean if you can't truly give pleasure to your partner in that way how are you going to be able to love and support right. them in other ways and also i mean the assumption that you're not just born knowing these things. Somebody actually right. has to explain it to you. And again, like I said, it's not just about sex. It's not just about hygiene and personal maintenance. But also, for example, a man is taught what to expect when your wife is pregnant, what happens after she has a baby. So let me ask you this. You were talking earlier um, offline about Christians versus Muslims. In Christianity, um, when a lot of the churches came in, they, they kind of banned everything. Um, and then at some point it was like, all right, the girls can learn, but the guys don't really mm -hmm. learn that much. So you do see a bit, uh, quite a bit of discord um, between the two, mm -hmm. where women are trained in all sorts of things. You know how to cook, you know how to clean, you know how to have sex, you have blah, blah, blah. And the men just wow. know how to make Talk money. Talk about an imbalance of, yeah. Power of, yeah, it's very imbalanced. Right. But along the coast with um, some, a lot of the Muslim cultures, they've been able to maintain some of the traditional African cultures wow. a lot better. And a lot of these dances are also practiced along the coast. So that's where you see men actually working these muscles and training and dancing in that way. So that's really quite interesting. It's very important to understand like when we look at Western culture versus typical African culture and even Far East, that there is a interference of religion in the sense that in the household, uh, we're not taught to how to bring sexual pleasure to our significant other. Right. Many of the times we are drowned by the roles that we're going to play when we're actually in a relationship where the man would be traditionally the uh, provider, the, the financial provider, the monetary provider for the family, and the woman would actually take care of the home. And then when we're dealing with elements of attraction and trying to relate to each other, it's almost like you go from not knowing anything to suddenly being the best lover that ever stepped on this planet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go a little bit further yeah. so that I can learn and so all of our viewers can learn. That's so everybody, I expect you to go home, keep practicing keep your practicing. chikacha, and really work those muscles and let's see how you feel in a week. We'll see you then. So you'll notice my top isn't moving. Oh, so it's so hard it's for me with my other dance training. Stay yeah. top straight. Okay. And then you can do, I, I can't do double time. Well, you don't need to. So you would, I mean, like you can lean to this side, you can lean to that side, you can lean front, you can lean back. So I can lean back. Right? I feel kind of ridiculous doing this. Am I doing this right? 
Yeah, absolutely. This is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> this segment of Life in the Streets has been brought to you by The Diet Rebellion by Dr. Carrie Fullerton. Live life, love food, be free. Sexuality, my definition of sexuality, it is a, a part of a relationship between two or more people. Um, I think sexuality is a way of sexual, like, sexual existence, what you do. Uh... I just think that it's the most important part of who we are as human beings. Sharing something. It's sharing your body and your, uh, it's sharing your body, not only your body, it's sharing your sensuality and your feelings with somebody. Sex and sexuality is just, you know, we come into the world as whoever we are and I think it just is a feel good kind of thing. And it could be one person, it could be more people, it's really up to, you know, everybody. I think we should have sexual freedom as long as it doesn't harm anybody, of course. Of sexuality? I think it's a matter of attitude. What you want to do what you, is up to you, and I feel that, like, um, some people have some different sexualities that are a little bit uh, left of centre, but, um, yeah, it's up to everyone, I feel, so, yeah as much as anything else. It's how your affect on other people. And it's how people interpret your affect. But like right now, you got a lot of sexuality going, Cindy. That's all I can say. So, Manuel, I have a little business proposition for you. Proposition, huh? Mm. Mm. I think you'll find it very enticing. <laughs> Hi, Manuel. Hello. I have a business proposition for you too. Mm, Mine's a little, you? yes, it's a little tastier. 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 I, I don't like know. Tastier. I know you do. My contract is something that you're going to want to sign. <laughs> oh. Show me where. Wow. So, Manuel, my yes. contract will take us to Bora Bora, mm. Paris. Paris. Paris, wherever mm. you want. When can we go? When can we go? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to join. Oh. I think we could connect some dots. Maybe of sign course. on a dotted line for the three of us. For where, the three of us? Where do I sign? Hmm. Hmm? I don't normally like the third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cindy Uncorked. <laughs> <laughs> so, sexuality in the workplace, is it appropriate or not? Um, this situation? I don't think so. Manuel, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. All thank right, you. we're going to kick your behind and let's talk about what is appropriate in the workplace and what isn't. So, with us today, we have the fabulous Jamie Dawn. Jamie Dawn is a professional psychic and success coach. Now. We're going to find out why a professional psychic is talking to us about sexuality in the workplace in a moment. But first, I want to ask you, what is your definition of sexuality? So sexuality is a very layered word. And there's several things about it. It's not just gender-based. It's masculine and feminine. And it's this coming together of both in order to engage all of our senses. When it's fully awakened and it's in our wholeness, then we can truly step into our true power and we're not abusing it and we're working in a place that is fully awakened. So this is really interesting because I totally get it, but some of our wonderful viewers might be thinking, I'm, I'm curious, what do you mean by masculine energy? What do you mean by feminine energy? How does this all work? So we all have masculine and feminine energy within us, right? And so right. masculine has this directed, really poised, conscious focus to it. Okay. It's a determination of will. And, it, and the feminine has a softer, a more open, think of the void or the womb as the um, image for the feminine. Okay. So when you have your masculine that's directed, focused will mixed in with the feminine, which encompasses a directed purpose, imagine what kind of work you can get done. Wow. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because I think of a lot of women trying to make it in the corporate world and they decide that they need to be men and they're all masculine energy. And we know those women, they show up and they're like, all right, today we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and they're completely 
completely devoid of what you're saying is a feminine energy, that womb that brings a softness and a, and a, a femininity to it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, what has happened, especially in our society today, is that there's been so much, first with the women's rights movement, which right. I absolutely agree with, we yes. need equality, Yes. but it hardened. It was like, we have to wear the pants and we have to be like the men. And we lost some of our suppleness. We lost the seduction that comes in the energy of the mind, the seduction of who we are as human beings. Right. Right. So this is, I love what you're saying because what you're saying is, is that we can still step up and be powerful, but the, you could step up and be powerful and be the man, which takes away, it strips us of who we are. Yeah. Or you can find a way to integrate that energy and be able to present yourself in the workplace with your full sexuality. Well, and agreed. And what yes. I would say too is that what happens is when men or women are in this place of power, it can be abused. So right, because I think a lot of people are afraid to show that feminine and masculine side and bring it all together and be their sexual beings in the workplace because of this abuse. So tell me a little bit about sexuality in the workplace. How does it show up? in the negative way in terms of abuse and how does it show up in the positive way? So I have a corporate background and I've witnessed some very unhealthy uh, abuses and um, uses of sexual energy. And one of the unhealthy ways is to watch a male or a female go and seduce somebody because they're trying to gain a status or because right. they're not in charge of their own energy. They want something. Their ego is overinflated or they're wounded. They're coming from a very wounded place. Mm. And so unhealthy means that you could have a boss trying to manipulate um, a coworker, you know, somebody that works for them. You could have where there's a somebody underneath trying to climb that corporate ladder, sleeping their way to the top. So what that does is it actually demoralizes that individual and it actually creates a lot of powerlessness. Right. In a healthy way, then when you, I, there's nothing sexier than seeing a man or woman walk in in their full presence, their confidence. You can feel that. Oh, it's delicious. It is delicious. Intoxicating. Intoxicating. And you want some of that, right? right? They're like, what is he having? What is she having? Right, because right. they're whole. They're, they're, it's not an arrogance to them. That healthy sexuality is, I am fully connected to my truth. I know why I'm here, and yet I'm soft and open, that feminine energy, hmm. saying I'm willing to invite you to negotiate, to c compromise, or to collaborate. So I have a question for you, because I actually posted on my Facebook wall recently, knowing that you're coming on my show, about, you know, about being sexy. It has nothing to do with weight. It has nothing to do with how you look. It's a feeling. It's a being. And how important it is for us to embrace our sexy to be successful in relation to what we're talking about. And somebody said, I am perfectly successful and I don't need to tap into my sexuality. So what would you say to somebody who says that? Well, I would say that they're very shut down, obviously. And yeah. when we come from a place that is shut down, when we don't own our sexuality, then we're not getting the full perspective yeah. to make decisions. We're not making empowered decisions. We're making decisions out of fight or flight. Yeah. And when that happens, we usually get a less than favorable result. <laughs> yes, I understand that entirely. <laughs> I've been there where I was shut down. So my question then for you is, I know that you come from a corporate background and you are a psychic. So some people are saying, well, why, why are you so interested in this personally? So because I do have a corporate background and working and I've seen it in that environment, but also now being a small business owner myself, I counsel a lot of clients who have experienced yeah. sexual harassment and even sexual abuse and, and that feeling of powerlessness, because oh. that's what it comes down to, yeah. and also wanting to be more aware and conscious of how they use their energy, so that not so that they can dominate someone else, right. but so that they can enjoy who they are, they can feel good in their bodies, they can feel good in their everyday lives. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's just so beautiful because you do, you work with thousands of clients a year and you really get to see what's happening in their life on a very deep level and the insight that you bring is beautiful. For a long time, I felt, before I found my power and found the, the mix of this, I felt like 
I was always having people coming up to me, men specifically, although I did sing in a lesbian bar for a long time. But, you know, I did have... <laughs> I did. I used to love me, and I'm like, I love you too, but I so don't swing that way. But um, I used to find men, especially before I really found my power and found this healthy mix that you're talking about, I often found that men would want to sleep with me to get a con for me to, you know, well, give you a role if I sleep with you. And I felt that it was always very inappropriate. Now, fast forward of finding my power in it. I am like so saucy and so like sexual all the time. And can I tell you that men respect me all the time and I use my sexuality in business and nobody ever abuses me. And I think it's important for women to understand and men that we can be fully who we are. But if you present yourself, if it's a good integration, you present yourself with the confidence you're talking about, then people will be magnetized. It's like what you said, they'll be magnetized to you but you won't be abused because they're going to feel that inner power because you're a whole person and not a broken person. Exactly. They're not, and they also realize that you're not trying to dominate or trying to project that sexuality yeah. onto them. It's not a proposal. Right. It just, it's a sense of presence. Presence. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So Jamie, I'm really curious to know how sexuality, how important it is in the workplace and in your relationships. But before we go there, our audience, you, we need to get you uncorked. So we're gonna go to a commercial break and live from the streets and we are going to find out from our people on the streets if they think that dressing sexy in the workplace is appropriate or not. Let's see, see you after commercial break. Are you truly living in the now or are you just okay? caught on an endless hamster wheel of work, struggling to be the mom you desire to be, and feeling your relationships straining under the pressure. Hi, I am Yai, and my course, Prosperity Now, will show you how to stop tolerating just okay and tap into the joy of abundance. When you powerfully live in the now, you will have a career that lights you up, raise happy and fulfilled children, and cultivate a deep, loving relationship with your partner. Go to prosperitynowcourse.com for more information on how to create your prosperous life by harnessing the power of now. Want more Cindy? Join her and professional speaker Jason Reed on the Speaking for Profit podcast as they talk about how you can influence your audience, whether it's one person or a thousand. How uncorked do they get? You're going to have to tune in to find out. How do you feel about women who dress sexy in the workplace? Look, what defines sexy? I mean, it's completely up to anyone how they dress. I mean, I always find like dress codes a little bit weird. I love it. Are you kidding me? So I, I, don't, I don't mind that at all. I mean, it's not up to me what, how I feel about it. It's how they feel, right? So... That's why I have one vagina, because I have the right answers to the right questions, right? <laughs> Women dressing sexy in the workplace. Well, you know, I lived in Latin America for quite some time, so there's probably more accepted than in the U.S. I think it's wonderful. I know they want to dress for success and wear dark blue suits and neckline shirts, but I love it when they dress sexy. So let me ask you this, then. Do you respect her less if she dresses sexy? No, I respect her more because she's having a great impact. She's using her attributes to impact me in a very favorable way. It also depends on the industry. I think everybody should be able to dress how they want to dress. Well, that was very enlightening. So I'm very interested. So let's talk about how important is sexuality in the workplace? Sexuality is probably one of the most important energies, and I'm using the word energy, right. that we bring into a working environment because it does allow us to have this creative, this uh, place of ideas, the, the enticement of collaboration that comes together when we're in a working environment. Yeah. Because to, you know, by ourselves we're pretty good. But imagine what a world of people coming together with their creative force, where their truth is connected and really feeling uh, strong and confident in who they are. What kind of mountains will move together? I love that. People don't really realize that connection between sexuality and creativity. And it all just sits in our room, or if you're a man, it sits 
and your pelvic floor. So, you know, that's really where creativity is and that's where it flourishes and that's where you get creative ideas in the workplace and that's where you get better brainstorming and better collaborations and it's beautiful. So, I bet you people watching are wondering, well, if I embrace more of the sexuality in myself, am I going to get harassed? Well, sexual harassment, and I don't want to take away from anybody who has had that experience. Absolutely not. This is different what we're talking about. Yeah, it it's certainly um, can come out in the workplace. But I will tell you, one of the things I would love to see in corporate America, in small business, in, in our environment, if we did more education on what sexuality is and how to use the energy of blending that masculine and mm. feminine, I have a feeling our sexual harassment laws probably will be a moot point. Yeah. Because people, because sexual harassment is an abuse of power. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a totally different thing. Absolutely. And it's, it's just an unconscious way of behaving out of fear or out of, uh, you know, the uh, wanting to project power onto other people to dominate. All right. Now let's look at the opposite side. What happens if somebody is threatened by your sexuality? Because I certainly have had this issue, especially in dating, actually. I'm not attracting the right men, but that's an off conversation. <laughs> um, but what happens if somebody is threatened by your sexuality? And then to tackle both men and women. So when people are threatened by sexuality, this is where understanding the difference of feminine and masculine energy and within your own body comes into play. Okay. So if there is a man or a woman who is threatened by me, if, then I will, if they're if they're coming at me in a way that is aggressive or that they're wanting to, to maybe stand toe to toe and create a power struggle, right. then I'll tap into my feminine energy and I'll soften and I will invite them mm. through, and I'm gonna use the word seduction and I don't mean it to have sex. I right. mean, I seduce them into a place of softening their energy so that that feminine collaboration and creativity can come into play. Wow, so it's really about tuning into the other person, picking up where they're functioning from or operating from, and being able to change your energy, more of the feminine or more of the masculine, to meet them where they're at. Exactly. That's a beautiful thing. Because if someone came at me in a passive way where you weren't getting anything done, you felt like they were trying to manipulate and they had no sense of yeah. direction, or then I would tap into that masculine side and say, this is what I need. And I would be direct. Love it. No excuses, no stories, just That's right. love it. That's right. So before we exit this amazing conversation we're having, tell me the top three things some of our wonderful viewers can do to start to tap into their power in a healthy way. First and foremost, dress what makes you feel good in your body that's appropriate for the company culture. So no G-strings? Uh, well, if you, work in a if you work in a club that has G-strings, then by all means, wear right. a G-string and be proud of it. <laughs> I get a few rhinestones while you're at it. But, you know, dress appropriately that, and dress in a way that feels good to you. Know, know who you are and say, and own your style, you know, because I think having that sense of ownership is another yeah. way. And believe it or not, you've got to create healthy boundaries. There so has that's the to, second one? Second one is create, create, healthy so, create healthy boundaries so that people understand what is and isn't appropriate for you. So you can have someone flirting with you if that's okay with you. Right. But you've got to know where your boundaries are and you've got to be able to communicate them very clearly. Yeah. And that's the third thing is communication is key. How you communicate your truth with others as well as with yourself. So be real, be genuine. I love this. This is brilliant. I think you've just opened up everyone's minds around this. Jamie, thank you for coming. But before we go, you're so brilliant and you're thank such you. an amazing psychic advisor and such an amazing success coach. And you, your ability to see people on a deep level and be able to guide them is remarkable. So can you please tell our viewers where we can find you? I would love it. So you can find me at jamiedawn.com. And uh, one of the things that I love to do is to go underneath the surface. So anything you're not telling me, we'll get underneath it. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been Thank a delight. Thank you. Hey, hey, it is time for Twitter Uncorked. The question of the week is, how do you tap into your feminine power? At MC Empson says, by serving others while exercising self-love and self-care for myself. At Mermaid Co. Fun says, 
when I'm making love to someone I'm deeply in love with and we orgasm together. Mm -mm. And of course we had to have a man chime in at True No Lies, it says, by calling on my sisters and my mother. Laugh out loud. Do you want to get uncorked? Watch for next week's question on my Twitter feed, at Cindy Ashton. Next up, we have a commercial break, but stay tuned because after the break, I am going to share a very powerful exercise to get you to tap into your feminine power. My name is Maxine Warsh, and I'd like to introduce you to the Warsh cloth. Simple to use, water only. With a warm cloth, you're going to remove all of your makeup. My face is clean and smooth and exfoliated, water only. The washcloth. Some people call it a miracle. I call it practical. I know you. Like me, you're a socially conscious entrepreneur, already creating a legacy in your business, living what you believe in, and nothing will stop you. Except having a web presence that's just meh, okay. The world needs to see your work, your passion, your gift. Let's show it to them. I'm Michelle Emson, and together we will build a digital platform that will be the foundation for your business growth. I did this for cindyuncork.com, and I want to do it for you. So visit me today at sanctuary-studios.net, and let's get started. This segment of Influence Uncorked was brought to you by Your Persuasive Voice with me, Cindy Ashton. Presentation and communication skills training to boost your influence. So earlier in the episode, Jamie Dawn talked all about tapping into your feminine power and your energy. So what does that really look like? So what I would love to do is talk a little bit about oxytocin. It's a hormone in your body that helps you to really get connected with other human beings and drop you into that feminine power. So how do we stimulate oxytocin? Well, we do breathing and we do what we call oxytocin breaths and they sound like this. Ha, ah, ha, ah, hi. So your diaphragm is a concave looking muscle and when you take your breath in right from the bottom of your ribs, it flattens out and it pushes all your guts down and then you release into an oxytocin breath. Ha! Huh. But how do you get down into your pelvic floor and how do you breathe down there to begin with? So I've got two ways to help you to start breathing this way. So the first way to get into your breathing and into your diaphragm, if you're the yoga lover kind of stretchy pretzel kind of gal or guy, I want you to slowly go into a squat position, take your elbows, Push them out, oh, don't flip over in the water like I'm about to do. <laughs> and just breathe, and you should feel all the breath going into your pelvic floor. And as you inhale, you should feel the breath in your belly and in your lower back. And then, of course, you're gonna oxytocin breathe. Ha, ah, ha, ah, and just let it go. Now, if you're not a pretzel, ooh, all right, I'm feeling like an old girl after that. So if you're not a pretzel, I want you to sit in a chair, sit up straight and flip right over and breathe. And so as you're flipping over and breathing, you'll automatically drop into your belly and feel your bum expand on the inhale and your lower back. And once you've really got the sensation, slowly start to edge, your, edge yourself up. So it looked like this. Okay, I'm breathing and I've got it. I'm gonna inch up more. I'm breathing and I've got it. I'm gonna inch up more and I've got it. And once you're erect and you're breathing and you've got it, again, oxytocin breathing. And it's gonna be amazing to release and get you soft and feeling loved and connected back into the world. So you're feeling all hot and ready to step into your sexual power? <laughs> what a blast you're about to have this next week. But stay tuned because next week is gonna be super hot too. Not hot, hot, hot into sexuality, but we are going to tackle a very, very important topic. Dr. Taisha Wilson is gonna be on the show and we're gonna really look at breast cancer and something that a lot of people don't know about breast cancer recovery that can change your life forever. So, you know, we're getting serious, but it's really important for you to be there. But in the meantime, as usual, we have a viewer request for me to sing a song. So be sure to go to the web exclusives and see what it is. It's a special request for somebody who has recently been in a major car accident and needs a little bit of a song to lift them up. So as usual, let me get my wine, go and have a great week and get uncorked. <laughs> 